every kit that you get comes with these pre-made up um, pieces that um, fit beautifully together and most of them are very well made um, and they really make a fantastic grill but if you're going to scratch build of course you have to build these from from scratch and I've been researching all over the net and really having difficulty um, finding uh, proven ways of, of making grills if we um, we look at the thickness of the cut and it's 104 so that means we need to get a blade um, that's 104 thick and the thickness of the of this space is 97 millimeters 0.97 millimeter 0.93 slight variation the best blade thickness closest to that I could get was 1.13 which is not too far off of, of what is cut here now quite clearly if you look at this piece the grain is running this way which gives it some strength so on the piece of timber I'm going to use the grain is running this way um, which means I'm going to be cutting the pieces cutting the slots this way uh, which will give the greatest strength for the little pieces that are left up so we're just going to cut off a piece I found three ways to make the grating so far. The first one uses the Priac. The second one is a combination of all the saws um, using the method in the Swan Practicum. And the third one, which will turn out to be the best of the three, um, makes a modification to the sliding table. So we'll go through each one of these and you can choose whichever one best suits you. In the case of the Priac, I have the largest number of saw blades, I think it's 17 in total, while on the Jim Barnes so far I only have three. To determine the thickness of the spacer, we need to add the thickness of the blade, this is 103, with the thickness of the, of the space Which is 195 and that's add them together and that will give you the thickness of the spacer we need to put on the saw so that means we need a spacer that is 2.51 millimeters and that's what this is and we put that to determine the length of the first cut we're using the sliding table on the preac and we also have a little spacer I've put here because the blade doesn't go all the way through and this gives me the depth of cut that I get a nice clean groove all the way so here we go And we've got our first cut. To get the second cut, you slacken the stop, place the spacer tightly up against the, the board, keeping it still in the groove of the blade so that this can't move, and you tighten the stop back. Take the spacer out, move it down, push the board flat against it, and you make the second cut. You need to make sure that this is square against the stop. And there you get 
second cut. So to set up for the next cut, same thing, leaving the board in the jaws of the blade, push the spacer out, put the spacer, tighten up, move it back, slide it down, put my extra spacer here and make the second cut. And you'll continue to get these cuts. And when it's all done, you'll end up with a piece like this. Now we're going to change the blade on the pre arc and we're going to use a very thin, very sharp blade because in trying to do this in the past, I found that the thinner the blade, the cleaner the cut. These pieces cannot be roughed up at all on the saw. To set the thickness of the frame, we can use the existing frame size, which is 0.77 millimeters. The actual, we know the cut is 103, so it should be just a little less than 103. Um, or you could use this, which is what I'm going to do. Use this frame to set the the thickness. It's a very loose fit. And that will give me the thickness of the frame pieces. To make sure they're exactly square, because this piece can change, I'm using a square um, and pushing it right up against the guard so that I can get nice thin square cuts. And it's really just getting too hard to hold this now. So just to show you that it works. And in the end, this is what you're going to end up with. The more you do this, the better you'll get. Um, the, the Perhaps the most important two things that I've realized in making the grills this way is that you need very sharp blades, number one. And two, when you have the piece on the sliding table and you're cutting the grooves, you need to make sure that the spacer is tight and that you repeat the exact same measurement over and over again so that all of the spacers that are left between the various pieces are exactly the same size. I have lots of pieces that I've done where in trying to rush it, the space between um, uh, varied in size. We're now going to make up the grates um, for the back and this is using the notch strips here. You need two tools, you need uh, tweezers. Um, my glue applicator and a bottle of instant CA. The process is relatively simple, although it can be quite frustrating. Um, first I assemble one side, then I square it off and use the CA 
to lock it in place and then once that's done and verified you can now fill the balance of the um, notch pieces in and then use CA um, putting a little touch on each piece now most of the books suggest that you use watered down PVA I find CA just so much better and easier to do this repetitive task and I think in the long term it'll be just as good the second method uses one groove button and some plain um, buttons to fit in the groove um, and is described in the Swan Practicum. In making the grill you need to determine the exact size of the holes inside. In the case of the Swan they're two and three quarter inches square. These are the inner holes. Um, in the case of the America I'm not quite sure that's determined. Um, so I'm just going to um, use the, ex the kit supplied um, to determine the size of the squares. So to make up the grating buttons we have a piece of wood same size um, thicker than we need and we're just going to run it through That's more than enough. In the case of the swan, um, you square it off in whatever manner you can. I've actually used um, the slotted pieces to square it off. And then you put solid pieces in each hole. And you could continue like that. Then I would stick them with CA or water down PVA, flip it over, and then put in the, the groove pieces to fill in the various slots as we come along. The last method turns out to be the best so far in making the groove buttons and it uses a modification to the Jim Bond's sliding table that I had made up by creating an inner sled that fits in the, in the Jim Bond sliding table. The sled has a little ridge on it which is the same thickness as the groove button and it simply works by it establishes the first cut and then each time a new cut is made you simply move the bulk stock down and clip it in and establish a new cut you place the insert into the sliding table adjusting the distance between the blade and the stop that is located on the insert to be the thickness of the groove button. These are the three methods that I've discovered so far on making up grills. You can decide which one best, best suits your need. Um, when you've completed making the, the pieces up, 
it's usually a good idea to run them through a thickness sander or you can hand sand them um, to give a nice clean finish before you actually put it on the model. So here we have my first attempt um, at using the swan uh, suggestion of how to make gratings. It certainly did not come out as good as the ones that I got with the kit, but I will continue to persevere. Uh, my history is that given time and lots of practice, I will get it equal to or better than this store-bought grating. These videos are meant to assist you in improving your skills and so I would be more than happy if someone has a better method of making these greetings that you contact me um, and I'll include those techniques along with the ones that I prefer um, in future videos on how to make greetings. So from us here on the America Project, continue modeling.